見えたあっうん Thanks for watching Storybound. We're going to dive into the Drum Island arc in the 10th story arc of the One Piece series and the fourth in the Arabasta saga. This arc introduces our crew's doctor, Tony Tony Chopper, into the series, and when the crew is forced to stop and find medical treatment for Nami after she falls sick during the previous journey. We have one of my new favorite arcs. Please like and subscribe, comment down below. Let's dive in. We learn that something has happened on this mysterious island, that a group of doctors have been banished from the island, and that Waypole, who we were previously introduced to in a brief fight scene with the former ruler, who abandoned the island after it was sieged by Blackbeard. A single member of Waypole's forces, Dalton, stays behind and becomes the sort of de facto leader of sorts for the town. And when Luffy and the gang arrive, they are quick to find out who they can seek out for medical attention for Nami, and they learn they need to reach the top of the peaks to reach an old crone witch doctor. Sanji and Luffy travel up the mountain and face some giant rabbits who start an avalanche and engage in a Pretty humorous snowboard battle on the way down. This is a pretty lighthearted scene, and I really enjoyed Luffy reaching out to save Sanji, stretching and pulling him back by his mitten, and it's honestly a great get. We learn more about the politics of old King Waypole being a scumbag and the new guard being kind, etc.、Uh, it's a bit, it's decent, but feels a bit generic. However, once again, seeing Luffy continue to one up himself in what he's willing to do for his crew, and after an even funnier turn of fate of Luffy and Sanji being saved by the giant rabbits they were fighting earlier on snowboards, are able to escape a battle with the king by climbing and pulling themselves hand by bloodied hand all the way up to the castle to save Nami and the now unconscious Sanji. We are finally introduced to Tony Tony Chopper, a reindeer, slash, not reindeer, who ate the human human fruit and can grow in size, who I thought loved pirates because of his hat, and has a cloudy, sad past that reminds me of a certain red nosed reindeer. We get a short side story here, finding out about the World Council, and we find that Waypole encountered Vivi as well as a child. Back to Chopper. We learn more about Chopper's former master, and his support and faith in the ideal of pirates rejecting impossibilities as his mantra to cure all diseases. When Chopper gets too attached and tries to find him the cure to his critical illness, he's pushed away. And we learn after a year of healing and training, his own death is only a few days away. Chopper's mentor has a plan, however, to heal the island before his passing, and we learn about the story of the cherry blossoms healing an impossible disease which supposedly happened to him, and how he wants the plants to grow on the island. He uses how the mushrooms in the book represent his mantra instead of poison, and how he tricks Chopper into helping him on his suicide mission to save the other doctors. Here was a shock for me, and I can't believe I didn't realize the doctors would be alive. It never actually even crossed my mind. I thought they were all dead or long gone. I had realized it was going to be a trap, but I was expecting something else. Luffy shows up in classic fashion, ready to recruit Chopper for just being as weird as he is, and simultaneously ready to kick some ass. The line of Sanji calling Luffy a monster. Visually affects Chopper here and seems to truly plant the seed of him eventually considering to join the crew. Sanji also gets a cool hero moment. Even though it was short lived, he's pretty consistently getting some cool scenes throughout the series. Usopp finally steps up and offering to carry Dalton was super cool if he was only to be pushed aside by Zoro, who reluctantly offered to do so in his place. as He actually has the ability to do so. This is until 
The town conveniently lets the team know there's a new way to travel up the hill quickly. Convenient for the plot, but also kind of funny. Luffy's speech at the end of chapter 17 is fantastic. Keep getting more and more tidbits of his true personality and what he is and what I really think ties him together as a character. Something similar to what you would have with Naruto where you, on the surface it's a goofy, troubled kid going through wacky adventures but has kind of a deep core set of values that make him incredibly interesting. We learn more about the types of devil fruit and how zone types have three transformations. How Chopper has also designed a medicine to increase that number. This, by the way, is my favorite panel in One Piece so far. It's beautiful. The solid forms of his face and just how far the pose is pushed and the thread marks on this face, this panel is hard as fuck. We learn someone is waiting for Luffy in Alabasta, and we see a mysterious figure who tells the village to let Luffy know he will wait for him only a few days, and reveals himself as a character named Ace. The party finally gets a moment to unwind here, without sabotage, and I do know the party size will eventually increase from images I have seen online, and we obviously have a few more characters to unlock on our path through the Grand Line, but I'm liking the dynamic and how things are coming together. I made a comment in previous reviews about how Oda really shines when things are chaotic. Everyone has something to do, and I think this set of volumes is a perfect example of this. With so many threads and character motivations throughout its chapters, Oda masterfully brings things together to an incredible, satisfying conclusion in this arc. Another comment I'd like to make is his ability to take something as dumb as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, smashing it together with the abominable snowman, equally ridiculous, and creating this fantastical representation of something rooted in real lore is amazing. He does this with so many things from circus animals to Michael Jackson, and I'm kind of blown away of how he pulls it off without it being the cheesiest thing ever. Touching base with each of our pirates here, Chopper is a very welcome and weird addition to the group, and I look forward to having a medical officer on the ship. Zoro sits back here and gets to be a badass for a few short moments. Usopp seems to be getting tired of being left behind, and is building up the courage to finally step into the limelight, but we'll need more time to see how that plays out. Nami is asleep for 90% of this and doesn't add much other than asking for payback and money after loaning Luffy her coat. Vivi doesn't do a ton here, but we learn about her story and where things are heading, and I have read the next arc, and we're going to get a lot more of her coming forward. Luffy is the same old, same old, just some of the top tier best bud vibes, with some of the most heartwarming moments and speeches so far in this series. And Sanji gets some solid screen time here, really a fan of his banter and engagement with the other pirates. He seems like he might have the most depth of the group so far besides Luffy, and I'm curious about his story unfolding. <laughs> He's supposed to talk about the duck. Um, there's a duck. And lastly, we get this cool piece of art detailing the Baroque. I also realized for the first time that Warlord Crocodile is actually number zero. I'm really, really looking forward to these enemies, to whether or not these enemies are one-offs or will come back to face the pirates later on in the series as well. My last review I stated, I felt like we stepped off the gas a bit. We're definitely back on track with what might be my favorite arc, probably tied with Nami's backstory and Darlong Park. I hear things get pretty amazing from here and I have read the next arc and Things are positive so far. I've been excitedly avoiding some pretty hype looking reviews as well from people like Lost in Discovery. Definitely check them out for some high tier content in One Piece Stormlight in the world of First Law. I'd really like to know what people thought about this arc in the comments down below. It's definitely not perfect, however I'm really digging the ramp up into what made the first few arcs so engaging. 
Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, have a good one. Thank you.